It was an unforgettable moment when I, Jennifer, first laid eyes on Alex. He was standing by the edge of the room, his eyes glinting with an intoxicating blend of intelligence and curiosity. From that day on, our love story began. It was everything you'd imagine, breathtakingly romantic walks by the river, shared dreams beneath the stars, and conversations that left me captivated and yearning for more. One day, as we sat on our favorite bench overlooking the city, Alex looked into my eyes and told me he loved me. A myriad of emotions welled up within me. Joy, excitement, a pinch of fear, but above all, a sense of security. When he proposed to me under the soft glow of the city lights, I didn't hesitate to say yes. But love, as beautiful and enchanting as it can be, sometimes paints over the cracks the flaws that make us who we are. I noticed one such flaw in Alex, one that would come to play a significant role in our future. Alex was stingy, not in terms of affection or time, but money. It wasn't long into our dating phase when I first encountered Alex's financial frugality. We had been shopping for a gift for a friend's baby shower, and I was surprised by Alex's reluctance to spend more than a few dollars. He meticulously calculated every expense, demonstrating a sense of stinginess that was surprising for a man with a comfortable income. Alex, we can afford this. It's for our friend, after all, I'd said, attempting to reason with him. But Alex was firm, replying, Jen, it's not about what we can afford. It's about the value of money. His obsession with money, I told myself, was perhaps due to his childhood. He had grown up in a family where every penny was accounted for, where necessities took precedence over luxuries. I reasoned his stinginess was his way of ensuring our secure future. My love for him was far greater than his one major defect. I chose to look past it, believing that love was about accepting your partner with all their flaws. So, we ventured into our married life with a hope that was as bright as a summer's day. Alex, you do know that I love you, right? And I accept you, all of you, even your stinginess, I told him one night, hoping he'd see my acceptance as a stepping stone for change. His reply was a soft kiss on my forehead and a whispered, I love you too, Jen. There were no promises of change, no acknowledgement of his flaw, but at that moment, under the moonlit sky, it didn't matter. I was in love, and for better or worse, I was ready to spend the rest of my life with him. A couple of years into our marriage, we welcomed our firstborn, a radiant baby boy we named Ethan. Two years later, our family grew with the arrival of our beautiful daughter, Grace. With each passing day, my love for Alex deepened as I watched him become a father, nurturing our children with love and patience. However, Alex's frugality continued to cast a shadow over our happiness. He insisted on pinching pennies, even when it came to the needs of our children. His salary as a schoolteacher was meager compared to my earnings as a project manager in a leading tech company, yet he refused to let me spend more on our family. I don't understand, Alex, I wished my frustration one evening after a long argument about upgrading Ethan's old crib. Why can't we spend a little more for our children's comfort? We can afford it. But his answer was always the same. Jen, it's not about what we can afford. It's about teaching our children the value of money. No matter how much I argued, Alex remained unbudged, and I found myself carrying the financial responsibility of our household. However, my love for Alex was unwavering, and I convinced myself that perhaps he was right. Perhaps we were securing a better future for our children by saving. Around this time, Alex's mother, Mrs. Madison, moved in with us. She was a kind woman with a heart as warm as a summer breeze. Mrs. Madison was elderly and needed care, and I happily took on the responsibility. Despite Alex's insistence that we didn't need to take on the added expense of caring for his mother, I loved her as my own. And she loved me back, treating me like the daughter she never had. Moreover, she doted on her grandchildren, making her presence in our house a source of joy and warmth. You're too kind, Jen, she would often tell me, her eyes welling up with gratitude. No, Mrs. Madison, I'd reply, I'm just doing what any loving daughter would do. It was indeed a bustling household, with me jebbling my career, caring for two young children, and looking after Mrs. Madison. But I was content, for I had a family I loved and a life I had chosen. It was during these years, as I watched our children grow and saw Mrs. Madison's health gradually decline, that I realized the essence of love. It was not just about acceptance and compromise, it was also about selflessness and sacrifice. I saw it in the way I worked extra hours to ensure a comfortable life for my family. I saw it in how I overlooked Alex's stinginess, believing in our shared dreams of a secure future. And I saw it in the tender care I provided Mrs. Madison, 
knowing that she was as much a part of our family as Alex and our children. This chapter of my life, though fraught with challenges, was nonetheless filled with love, and that made every moment worth it. One sunny afternoon, life took a sorrowful turn. Mrs. Madison, my beloved mother-in-law, took her last breath. The house, once filled with her laughter and warm stories, now echoed with the silence of her absence. My heart was heavy with grief, and I saw a sadness in Alex's eyes that mirrored my own. In the midst of mourning, I found solace in my children. I held Ethan and Grace close, their innocent smiles a balm to my aching heart. I wished for them to remember their grandmother as the vibrant, loving woman she had been, not the frail shadow she had become in her last days. I miss grandma, Ethan whispered to me one night as I tucked him into bed. I know, sweetheart, I miss her too, I said a lump forming in my throat. But remember, she's in a better place now. While we were still grappling with this loss, life dealt us another blow. My own mother fell sick. It was a sudden harsh disease that struck out of nowhere. She had always been active, her vitality belying her age. But this illness rendered her weak and in need of care. Jen, she said weakly over a phone call, I don't want to be a burden, but I need your help. You're never a burden, mom, I assured her, my heart aching at her frail voice. You took care of me when I needed you, and now it's my turn to do the same. I discussed the situation with Alex. I told him about my decision to have my mother move in with us. He listened silently, his face impassive. I expected understanding, support. I expected him to stand by me like I did when his mother needed us. But his reaction was a bolt from the blue. Jen, he said, we've barely managed to find balance after my mom's death. Bringing your mom here, taking on her care, it's going to upset that balance. I was taken aback. Alex, she's my mother. She's ill. I can't abandon her. I'm not asking you to abandon her, he replied. I'm just asking you to consider the burden. I could not believe what I was hearing. This was the man who loved me, the man who had seen me care for his mother in her final days. I couldn't help but feel betrayed. And yet, my decision was resolute. Alex, I said firmly, my mother will move in with us. I will care for her just like I cared for your mother. And I hope, for the sake of our love, you'll find it in your heart to support me in this. Despite the growing chasm between us, I was determined. I was going to do for my mother what any loving daughter would do. The challenges were daunting, but my resolve was unwavering. A week later, my mother moved in. The moment she entered our home, wheeled in by a nurse I could see a change in Alex. His usually warm eyes had turned cold, his welcoming smile replaced by a grim line. Alex, I called out as I wheeled my mother into the living room, come say hello to mom. He glanced at her, then at me, and then returned to his newspaper, muttering a half-hearted hello without making eye contact. I was stunned. This was not the man I had fallen in love with, not the man who had claimed to love me in sickness and in health, for better and for worse. My heart pounded in my chest as I watched him dismiss my mother, his mother-in-law, with such disdain. Turning to my mother, I said, I'm sorry, mom. Alex is just, he's just having a rough day. My mother squeezed my hand, her eyes filled with understanding. It's okay, honey, don't worry about me. But I was worried. Not just about my mother, but about my husband, my marriage, my family. I realized that I could no longer overlook Alex's selfishness, his lack of empathy, his inability to reciprocate the love I had shown his mother. That night, after ensuring my mother was comfortable and the children were asleep, I sought Alex out in our bedroom. He was lying in bed, staring blankly at the ceiling. Alex, I began, my voice trembling with the weight of my emotions. We need to talk. He turned to look at me, his expression inscrutable. About what? About us, I replied. About my mother. About your, your attitude. I've already told you, Jen, he retorted, his voice ice cold. I don't think we need a new burden in our lives. A burden, I echoed, unable to comprehend his harsh words. My mother is not a burden, Alex. She's family, just like your mother was. And I, I need you to understand that. Alex sighed, rolling his eyes. I didn't force you to take care of my mother, Jen. That's not the point, Alex. I shot back, feeling my temper rise. The point is that when someone you love is in need, you help them. You don't abandon them. You don't see them as burdens. We argued back and forth, our words echoing in the silent house. My pleas for understanding met with his stubborn refusal to see beyond his selfish perspective. It was a long, grueling conversation that left me exhausted and emotionally drained. 
But it was also a conversation that opened my eyes to the painful truth. I had made a life with a man who was unable to comprehend the value of compassion, the essence of family. And that realization was a bitter pill to swallow. The next morning, I woke up to an ominous silence. Alex was sitting at the dining table, his breakfast untouched, his gaze fixed on the empty chair across him. The tension was palpable as I approached him, the echo of last night's argument still lingering in the air. Alex, I began, my voice faltering, we can't just ignore what happened. We need to. He interrupted me with a harshness that took my breath away. I've been thinking, Jen, he said, his voice brittle, and I've realized something. I held my breath, my heart pounding in my chest. What? What have you realized, Alex? That it's me or her, he said, his gaze finally meeting mine. His eyes were cold, devoid of the warmth and love that had once drawn me to him. Alex, that's, that's not fair, I stammered, my mind racing to comprehend his words. You can't ask me to choose between you and my mother. I can, he said simply, and I am. My world spun as the impact of his words hit me. He was asking me to choose, him or my mother, my husband or the woman who gave me life. It was an impossible choice, a heartbreaking dilemma. And yet, the answer was crystal clear. I, I choose my mother, Alex, I said, my voice trembling. I choose my mother and our children. There was a long silence as Alex stared at me, his expression unreadable. And then, he nodded, standing up from the table. Fine, he said, his voice void of emotion. You can have the kids. The day we moved out of our shared home and into my mother's was a bittersweet one. As I packed up our lives into boxes, memories flooded me, our wedding, the birth of our children, the countless shared moments that make up a shared life. I watched as our children, Emma and Matthew, ran around, picking up their toys and books, too young to understand the implications of our departure. Before we left, I found Alex sitting alone in our now barren living room. He seemed lost, his gaze focused on the spot where our family portrait used to hang. I approached him, holding back tears. Alex, I said, my voice barely a whisper. This doesn't have to be the end for us. We could still work this out, for us, for the kids. His gaze met mine, and for a moment, I saw a flicker of the man I had loved. But it was gone as quickly as it came. You've made your choice, Jen, he said, his voice filled with resignation. With a heavy heart, I led our children out of the house that had once been our home, and into the uncertainty that lay ahead. Adjusting to life at my mother's was a challenge. The kids missed their father, their routines, their home. My mother, still weak but determined, did her best to make us feel comfortable. I threw myself into my work, into taking care of my children and my mother, hoping to drown out the ache in my heart. Despite the difficulties, there was a newfound peace in our lives. The constant worry about pleasing Alex, about balancing our finances, had vanished. Instead, there was a simple, raw honesty to our life now. It was just my children, my mother, and me. And we were determined to make the best of it. My mother's health began to improve, her once sallow complexion replaced with a healthy glow. The kids started settling in, finding joy in the little things, like helping their grandmother in the garden or baking cookies on a Sunday afternoon. And I, I began to rediscover myself. I found strength in my independence, in my ability to care for my family on my own. In the stillness of the night, when the kids were asleep and my mother rested, I would find myself alone with my thoughts. I missed Alex, I couldn't deny that. But I also knew that I had made the right choice. Months after our separation, I heard news about Alex through a mutual friend. She told me of how he'd started seeing a new woman. Someone he'd met at a local bar. The woman was stunning, no doubt with a sultry charm that caught every man's attention. Alex, despite his usually guarded nature with money, seemed to be lavishing her with gifts and experiences. Jen, my friend said cautiously, he sold the house. I froze, my heart pounding. What? He said he wanted a fresh start. He sold it and moved in with her. It looks like he's spending quite a lot on her. I couldn't believe it. Alex, the man who'd barely spent a penny on me or the children, was spending all his money on a woman he just met. A few more weeks passed before the final blow came. Through the same friend, I learned of Alex's misfortune. His new love, the woman he'd lavished all his money and attention on, had betrayed him. She'd taken his money, his heart, and fled. Left him with nothing but a drained bank account and a shattered ego. He reached out to me then, a broken man seeking forgiveness and refuge. We met at a coffee shop, a neutral location that held none of our shared past. 
He looked older, his eyes haunted by the mistakes he'd made. Jen, he said, his voice breaking. I, I messed up. I heard, I replied, keeping my voice steady. You gambled everything away, Alex. He nodded, his eyes filled with regret. I thought, I thought I could start fresh with her. But I was wrong. It took everything within me not to scream at him, to demand why he couldn't have started fresh with us, his own family. But I held my composure, knowing that this was not the time for anger. Alex, I said, my voice soft but firm. You made your choices. And now you have to live with them. In the months that followed our move, my mother's health took a turn for the better. It was a slow and steady improvement, each day bringing her more energy and color. One day, I returned from work to find her standing in the kitchen, preparing dinner. My heart leaped at the sight. Mom, I said, rushing to her side. You should be resting. She waved me off, a small smile playing on her lips. I've been resting for months, Jennifer. It's time I did something useful. From then on, she became more active, taking part in the children's activities and even accompanying me on the occasional grocery run. Her spirit was indomitable, a beacon of hope and strength for us all. Our children, Emma and Matthew, started to bloom in this new environment. They no longer walked around with heavy hearts and confused eyes. Instead, their laughter echoed through the halls of the house, their smiles were brighter, and they enjoyed every moment with their grandmother. One night, as we sat down for dinner, Matthew looked at me with serious eyes. Mom, he began, I miss dad, but I like it here. I like having grandma around. It's, it's nice. Emma, always the quieter one, nodded in agreement. I like it too, she added. Hearing their words, my heart swelled. Yes, we had lost much, but we had also gained so much more. We had each other, and we were stronger and happier for it. My mother, now a cornerstone of our little family, raised her glass. To new beginnings, she toasted, we clinked our glasses together, the sound echoing throughout the house, a testament to our resilience, to our new life. One day, as I was dropping the children off at school, I noticed a figure standing near the gates, a figure that was all too familiar. Alex, he looked older, more haggard than when I had seen him last. His once smartly calm hair was disheveled, and his clothes were in disarray. Jen, he greeted me as I walked up to him. His voice was hoarse, lacking the confidence it once held. Can we talk? My heart was a mix of emotions. Anger, bitterness, a tinge of pity, but most of all, a strong sense of resolve. All right, Alex, I replied, keeping my voice steady, let's talk. We sat in silence for a while, watching our children mingle with their friends before school started. When he finally spoke, his voice was barely a whisper. I'm sorry, Jen, he said, his voice heavy with regret. For everything. I studied him for a moment, the man I once loved, who had let his selfishness tear our family apart. A part of me wanted to comfort him, to soothe his guilt, but I knew that was not my place anymore. Alex, I began, choosing my words carefully. I appreciate your apology, but it doesn't change the past. It doesn't change what you did. He nodded, a single tear trickling down his cheek. I know, he said. But I wanted to make things right. I wanted to. Come back. Be a family again. I took a deep breath, bracing myself for what I had to say next. Alex, you left us. You made your choice, and you can't just walk back into our lives because things didn't work out for you. But Jen? No, Alex. You can't expect to drop back into the kids' lives as if nothing happened. They've moved on. We've moved on. His face crumpled at my words, but I held my ground. I knew I was doing what was best for my children, for my mother, and most importantly, for myself. I won't stop you from seeing the children, Alex, I said, my voice softer now. They deserve to have their father in their lives. But you and I, we are done. And with that, I walked away, leaving behind a part of my past that no longer held power over me.